1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined to know, not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. But what? But in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen or ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what knoweth the man, knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but by the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Amen. Father, I love you today. Pray, oh God, I pray. Anoint the sound, anoint the words, anoint the, the hearers and the speaker together. Lord, let us, for a moment, let us be caught up Lord, to sit together in heavenly places, that, Lord, we could taste the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, you can be seated. There are things I do not understand, like the tax code. I do not understand meme culture I'm sorry my kids have tried to explain it to me but I am still in the dark if the cops arrest a mime does he have a right to remain silent these are things I just if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it does it make a sound why do we drive on a parkway and park on a driveway these are Tremendous mysteries. But on a serious note, there are absolute mind-boggling questions that grip our hearts and minds. If you've had tragedy or sickness or uh, 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 addiction grip your life or someone you love, it can make your heart cry, Why? Why? To the sound booth. Why? There's a, there's a sermon slide. Sound booth. There's a sermon slide. Sound booth. Everybody say, why? Why? On, in our troubles and our trials, disasters and disappointments, this question many have considered when contemplating the events of this week in history. Jesus started out the week riding on a donkey and all of Israel came out laying out their, their, their garments and with palms in their hands they sang Hosanna, Hosanna blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord it seemed like the world was going to get Jesus we're going to worship Jesus we're going to accept Jesus it was the thing 
But in just a few days, Judas, his accountant, sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Peter, the spokesman, denied him in front of the soldiers. We see that the rest of the disciples were scattered and Jesus stood. Jesus stood in this place of betrayal, in inquisition, asking him questions. Why would this happen to Jesus? Somebody say Jesus. He was born a miraculous birth. Angels sang. Shepherds came. Wise men worshipped. Uh, there was Anna and Zechariah. Simeon. There were uh, so many miracles. Angelic visitations there at his birth. At the, the, the beginning of his ministry, he did unspeakable things he was baptized by John the Baptist there was a great voice from heaven there was the spirit that descended here is a good man that in his ministry healed the sick he caused the blind to see the lame to walk the leper to be cleansed he he, he can forgave the sin of sinners why would Jesus this perfect man, this God-man, this man-God, why would he have to die? Somebody say, why? It is, it is a thing. When we understand why Jesus came, why did he have to die? And if he had to die, why, didn't he have to, why did he have to die the way he died? He didn't just, uh, you know, lay down and give up the ghost. But he was paraded, he was berated, he was shamed, he was beaten, he was flagellated, he, he was beaten with, with stripes, he was bruised with, with hands, he took upon him such great personal indignity and violence. Why? Why did it have to be so hard? And, and if it had to be done, why did it have to be done in public? Why could it be just in some secret room and it just happened and we would never know? But the Bible shows us that he, 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 he carried the cross through the streets. It was a public spectacle. And even to the point that he wasn't able to finish the journey and another man was compelled to carry it the rest of the way. And they took his hands and his feet and they nailed them to this cross. I can't even, in fact, I saw a picture yesterday of where they had unearthed a, a, a remains of men who had died on the cross and the, the nail was still in the hands and the feet. To think of how painful that is. Why did it have to be so hard? And then they lifted up the cross. I can see it in my mind as they, he's hanging on the nails and they lift it up, up, up and it slides and jars in the hole and he shakes on the cross and I cannot imagine the pain. Why did it have to be this way? And we know that Jesus died that day looks at those that betrayed him, those that denied him, those that crucified him, those that chose Barabbas over him, and he prayed a prayer, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He says it is finished and it breathed his last, gave up the ghost, and he was, he was dead. How, why is that part of the good news? I just picture in my mind those men that had lost, who had left everything on that day. It seemed they had lost everything again. And they went to their, their places, no doubt, to weep, to, to ask their questions, to be in despair. And the three longest days those men ever lived were the three days after that terrible day Jesus died to understand why that is good news 
You have to understand the bad news. That is good news. Jesus died. That is good news. It doesn't make sense to me. But the reason why this had to happen is because all you got to do is open your eyes, read the newspaper, and even consider your own circumstance and situation. Things that have happened, do happen, will happen in our families and our friends. And we can see that humanity is broken, wrapped in shame, bound in condemnation. In the brokenness of our lives, in the brokenness of our hearts, generation after generation, iniquity, shame, abuse, violence, addiction, strife, racism, genocide, hatred, confusion just survey the world we live in and our world is eat up with corruption troubles and problems can I get a witness emptiness addiction hopelessness we were talking about yesterday we had an opportunity to spend some family time and and and, and we got to talking about some very gifted people who had the world before them uh, they, they had big homes, they drive, drove nice cars, the world thought they were wonderful and worshipped, it seemed, even their presence and their gifts. They had everything before them, but they were unhappy, miserable people, because at the end of the day, even today, people can have everything the world promises, and the more they get, the more miserable they become, because they find out the lie, the mirage, the things that are promised to give you something don't give you anything and you're left more broken, more bound, more condemned, and more ashamed of where you are. Somebody say why. Amen. The Bible shows us from Genesis chapter 3, uh, murder begins in chapter 4. Uh, uh, you find violence fills the earth. Just read the book of Genesis. There is perversion. There is iniquity. There is murder. There is all kinds of amazing, terrible things that happen throughout the scripture. And that is why. Everybody say why. John 3, 17, Jesus said, John recording, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. Neither do I stand here today to condemn you because Jesus didn't have to come to, come to condemn us and I don't have to open my voice to condemn anyone. We condemn ourselves by our own lives and the reality is we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We have by inheritance. It doesn't matter whether you come from the rich or the poor, whether you come from Hispanic or 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 Russian or uh, English. There is an inheritance we get from our parents, from our grandparents, that gives us a curse that doesn't wash off with, with dove. It just doesn't wash off with, with, with a, a washcloth. Your mama can spit on her finger and rub it on your head that don't wash it off we are born with the stain we are born with condemnation and I don't have to tell you that we all know it and so the cross is so so cruel and the beating is so severe and, and the, the stripes are so deep and the blood is so red because that's what it took to save us to deliver us to cover us to help us live a life above sin to be brought out of darkness to be delivered from shame it took a great sacrifice because our sin is so great Amen. It's sad to consider Jesus came to the Jews and the Jews were the chosen people. Jesus was a Jew. Jesus was born uh, uh, of the seed of David and, and, and it was God's intention that the, the Jewish people would be a kingdom of priests. That they would be a witness that the sons of Abraham, that the, that the daughters of Abraham, they would be a witness to the Jehovah God. But as it happens today, what was intended did not happen. 
and because they didn't read the word, didn't believe the word, and they added to the word, they became a, a, a nation of blind people. They were so blind, Jesus, their Messiah, came, and they didn't know who he was. Someone asked the question the other day, did the devil know who Jesus was, and did the devil know what was going to happen? I do believe the devil had a great inclination that Jesus was not like every other man. I believe there was something in the evil spirits of this world. They knew Jesus had a power they did not have that they had to submit to. The, the demoniac cried out to Jesus and said, have you come to, to persecute us before our time? And Jesus rebuked the devils and they fled and they went into the, the pigs and the pigs jumped off the, the cliff and they drowned in the water. The, the demons understood Jesus was someone like they never met before, but did they know that when Jesus would go to the cross and die and his blood was shed, that he'd rise up on the third day? Did they know that his blood would wash away sins? Did they know the blood of Jesus would ultimately defeat Satan and hell? No, they didn't know. Because the scripture I read to you, if the princes of this world had known, the Bible says Jesus said to Judas, go do what you got to do. And the Bible says immediately Satan entered him and he went and betrayed the Lord. If the devil would have known and the devil got in Judas, he'd sent Judas to the McDonald's. Whatever you do, don't betray Jesus. Amen? I was listening to a song this morning. Uh, it's Carmen's song, Sunday's Coming. Amen. If you hadn't listened to it, don't know it, go home and read it. Go look on my Facebook page. I've shared it. It's really good. I'm not going to sing it to you and everybody say, praise God. You know, the conclusion of my message is, 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 is that when we understand the why, I think that a proper term that follows is wow. Jesus died for my sins. I can live above sin. I can be set free. I can have peace. I can have wholeness. You know, I believe Jesus gave us the answer to the reason why. There's a place in the scripture at the beginning of his ministry. He read from Isaiah 61, and this was what Jesus said. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. This morning, I just want to encourage you today that Jesus came that we could have have a peace. There are many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. Amen? I, 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 don't, I don't expect you to leave here today with all the answers because I don't have all the answers. I have people on a regular basis ask me questions and I don't know the answer. And I've lived long enough to know it's all right to say, I don't know. Say that with me, I don't know. There's some things we will never know. But there are some things I do know. Jesus died to set me free. 
Jesus died to give me victory. Jesus died to wash away my sins. Jesus died that I might be born again. Jesus died to make me whole. Jesus died to make me whiter than snow. Jesus died to heal my body. Jesus died because he loves everybody. I'm just being a poet today. Jesus died that I might live. Jesus died for the eternal life he might give. Jesus took stripes on his back for my healing. Jesus took a beating for my peace. Jesus was took stripes on his back that I could experience his healing. Jesus gave his all that I could have hope. And so that I could sing. We can sing. Can we stand together? Once like a bird 